All right, everyone. Uh, I guess I'm uh, last, hopefully not least. Uh, it's hard to follow Sonal. She did an amazing presentation. And uh, what I'd like to cover uh, this evening, uh, uh, quickly give you uh, uh, some of the context that uh, led up to the force, uh, Forex Horsepower Report and uh, my relationship with Torres Capital and Ken Long. Uh, basically last year, uh, it was around February timeframe. I went ahead and uh, purchased the Taurus Capital program. I've been trading uh, Forex for oh, many years. And, uh, and uh, what I saw in there was a lot of goodness, uh, a lot of goodness. And uh, I liked the way Ken uh, focus and hyper focus was on statistics and probabilities, uh, which I absolutely love. <clears throat> in terms of that uh, term, I think it was, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but whoever came up with the ruthless risk management, I love that. I love that term. And, uh, and so this began to develop and we put it on a talent LMS system. And I guess we're going to be migrating over to Rizuku here in a little bit. But uh, this is in weeks here. This, the issue is the 79th edition. Uh, it's 79 weeks since its inception. And uh, we have uh, have created together uh, uh, Forex 1.0, which is the kind of the foundations course of boot camp. Forex 2.0, which is the intermediate course, kind of for the... Uh, intraday type of trader or somebody who wants to do um, other than swing trades. And then the Forex 3.0 <clears throat> evolved into uh, kind of a sharing of TTPs and best practices with um, each of the professional traders that were interested in trading uh, Forex. And then also led um, back in August, uh, we started programming. Uh, programming scripts uh, and uh, scripts to um, mirror some of the best practices that we used with Forex uh, for the both the individual trader, the broker, and adapt to the broker. Um, because as I'll go through here in a little bit, the, it was a, a little different learning curve in terms of adapting the trading style on the swing trades via TC2000 to Awanda, which we use TradingView right now um, as our, our platform. Um, but uh, we, we started programming these scripts. So we programmed uh, the two candle rule. I have uh, the Sunday night special and uh, riding the dragon. And, uh, and then we have a, a weekly midweek review on uh, progress and that kind of thing. And uh, we share stories and best practices on Wednesday evening at about uh, 5.30 Eastern time. And Worth sets that up uh, uh, with uh, the rest of the crew. And anybody who wants to come that's, uh, that's a member there can, can come in and, uh, and just uh, have a chat. So, you know, and uh, there's a lot of uh, goodness coming in from sharing how we get around some of the programming challenges, some of the math, and some of the uh, some of the trading challenges in terms of determining our stops and targets. This issue uh, was uh, through uh, last week, and um, I, I have yet to do it. I only do it on a weekly basis. I know Ken Long does probably uh, you know a daily basis of of uh, overviews and that kind of thing. I can't do that. I, I can only do it once a week. And, uh, and I, I trade, I used to trade on the, the swing trades uh, with TC2000 and I moved over to eight hour on TradingView. And, uh, and that's specifically for those auto scripts uh, that I mentioned with Bill. Uh, I trade TradingView and then all my auto trades through my scripts go through AutoView we're automatically executed and, uh, and that, that way I don't have to watch the charts that frequently and all that. But uh, here is uh, my <clears throat> layout for TC2000. You have the seasons here that we, we talked about, not only for personal, but um, kind of an overview of 
where the market's going. I track 27 currencies, only majors and minors. Um, the majors and minors currencies have some stability with them around the world, um, but uh, some of the exotics or whatever the, the brokers will charge, I've, I've seen upwards to 10% on, a, on, a, on an actual uh, slippage you know, charge. So you have to be kind of careful with the exotics, but uh, the, the 27 there are pretty stable to where uh, you know, your spreads and commissions are not that costly. Um, here are the seasons. I also coded in here um, uh, with another uh, uh, team member there on the Forex team, the two candle rule, um, and also Heikenashi. Now I use Heikenashi as a momentum check for the, the daily swing trades, but also for the eight hour too as well. And that helps me um, if you look at the left chart, this is the Heiken Ashi, which is the average candles. And then over here, are the regular price action candles. And I use the RL10 significantly to determine whether or not I get in and out of the market. And um, uh, this, this kind of here depicts an auto trade, uh, trade that was done in August. Wonderful V shape. It's kind of like uh, the swing trader's dream, you know, where you got to uh, incredible week and went down and then an incredible week going up that was catastrophic success during that week and I, uh, it was absolutely amazing so this was one trade out of those uh, 27. Uh, the three classes that I have is uh, the Forex 1.0 boot camp it it basically gets me from introductory even if you've been a, a seasoned trader it kind of just kind of gives you the you know, the background of, you know, of Forex itself and how, how these, uh, these currencies trade, but it also go, covers a little bit about what, you know, Sanal was talking about in terms of, of, you know, the, the bullet journal. I use the bullet journal to keep, keep track of, you know, some daily economic things, but also some of my thoughts and uh, um, concerns and stresses and that kind of thing that may, may come up from that. Um, it also helps me set goals. I have a goal setting um, uh, lesson in there to help set goals. So if you're meeting your particular goals at that point, it's good. And then uh, uh, Forex 2.0, I got uh, uh, intermediate course with talks, uh, uh, talks about uh, different uh, aspects of Forex. Um, for me, I personally cannot stand gaps. I hate gaps. Uh, uh, so um, I don't trade over the weekend. I only trade uh, <clears throat> from 4 p.m. on Sunday to 4 p.m. on Friday, uh, Central Time. And in that way, I, I'm not concerned about some significant gaps going up and down and, and shocks happening over the weekend to where I, I'm in a trade and I'm going, oh, wow. Uh, uh, so that's, that's how I currently trade and uh, with the team members and their uh, uh, they're good with that. They like uh, the, the fact that we avoid some of these gaps here. I have a public YouTube channel on there as well. Um, this, this basically covers the TC2000 for the rest of the public. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, the Forex feed that goes into TC2000 from FXCM, their candles change at 11 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to get into Awada, which, you know, they trade, uh, their candles change daily at 5 p.m., which is the worst in terms of commissions and spreads. So I went ahead and uh, went to the eight hour and we kind of found a good rhythm with how the world banks work in, in terms of that eight hour cycle um, uh, around the clock, you know, from Sunday to Friday. So it's... Uh, it's been pretty good for us in terms of returns, so that's what uh, that's what we're going with right now. And then uh, we got that weekly Zoom meeting that Worth sets up, and uh, anybody's invited to that. Some of the economic red news, uh, red economic announcements that will affect the currencies. I go ahead and announce them here, and then I went ahead and talk um, actually the list of trades that we do. <clears throat> with the script. Um, my uh, focus on this 
is a minimum of one to one, right? You know, so you might have, and that's what I mean one to one is I use the Z3 as the target. And then if there is a stop or associated with that, that has to be at least one to one risk or reward. Um, I like a one to one. 1.5 as a potential risk or reward. Um, if I have um, a particular um, regression line that is in there, that is either the 270 or the 200 or the 90 um, that's in there. And uh, I use that as the potential target, but I have at least my stop as a one-to-one. -one. I don't work anything other than that on the one-to-one. -one. I don't like a uh, say the PSARS uh, three to one reward. I, I don't like that. So I will keep that at the probably the base of the candle, at least trying to get to one to one where I use the Z3 as my target. Um, the, the different types of diversity that I work through, um, there's three of them. Now, one of them is the probability diversity or statistical diversity that I, I just talked about. The other one is the behavioral diversity. Um, I will use what they call a one, two, three punch out uh, on, the, on the candles. Uh, basically, if they're green candles that are above the RL10 and they're three in a row, three soldiers, as it's called, three candles, then I'm out. I, I, I use that behavioral thing to look at. Um, I've been using it for years in terms of institutional buying to get that initial surge above the RL10 then uh, or central banks and then the institutional or hedge fund traders to go in there and push up the price even more. And then the third day, then the, usually the retail traders come in on the last, last day. And you'll see these three soldiers or three crows uh, combinations all throughout uh, the the charts and and it seems to be very successful in terms of you know kind of getting in and scaling in and then also uh, scaling out too as well. Um, this is the list of uh, trades that that I have. Now I went ahead and put not only this report in the chat box but also the um, the video in there that's associated with that, so you can look over each of the trades that I did. Um, on TradingView. <clears throat> and basically, this was one week uh, during Thanksgiving, and uh, the computer did all the work, which was kind of nice, you know, so, and then uh, we had, uh, we had catastrophic success on Black Friday. So, uh, one lot trades for each one of these currency pairs, this was the end result. Uh, the two candle rule, um, uh, we have the standard uh, metrics that, that uh, Ken, uh, Ken has uh, provided as far as following there, the SQN, the average standard deviations, min, max gains, and total trades. So for the total trades of November, uh, using the two candle rule, we have about 279 trades. Now, I understand that that will skew the, uh, the SQN. Um, uh, Basically, I guess 100 trades is the best measure for that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm continuing to use that. So the previous weeks was 3.7, and we were up uh, at the end of the week at 4.92. Average trade was between, uh, I think it was about 130 or so. And then shows our scatter plot with a nice uh, set of trades with a nice uh, kind of incline there. And then my equity curve uh, um, doing pretty good. Now, it's not without drawdown, as you can see here. We do have drawdowns that we have. And when I was talking to uh, about to Salon is like, when we get catastrophic success like this, this week right here, and then, you know, how do I deal with the consolidation week here at this point? I think that uh, I think that app will be very helpful in me to determine on how I do approach the system and not just do it automatically machine like the same way every week, every week. I've got to be able to uh, calculate the ranges on this. So there's a lot of conversation among the group um, in terms of how we we approach these and address these. 
to make sure that we minimize these drawdowns as much as possible and keep the secondary curve going up. <clears throat> now, one of the things that I do like um, uh, with this, the stop lights is, let me see if I can get this. No. I like to compare previous week with the next week to kind of know where the seasonal changes are going with, right? So what you see here is I'll, I will list the, the amount of long shorts, those that are volatile, uh, currency pairs of volatile, and those that are quiet. Uh, for this week, I think there was only five currency pairs that were in the normal range. All Every single one of them was volatile this week. Um, it just means that we had a, a, a rapid volatile week with a lot of consolidation, a lot of reverse wedges, um, people getting stopped out, and um, you know the, a lot of stop hunting by the banks right now in terms of uncertainty that was going on in the markets. So... If any week was a good week to not trade, it would have been this week after we had a catastrophic success the previous week. So that's that was my question to uh, to her and basically trying to, hey, how could we apply this behavioral app to your trading after you've had a, a significant week? Uh, five in the spring, nine in summer, <clears throat> and fourteen in the winter. So a lot of them, a lot of them were in the winter season. Um, which could have been, uh, you know, potential to the spring and then back down to winter, which happened uh, this week. Uh, so a lot of collapsing dragons. Um, and then this, this showed the, the current week that it was in. So we had a lot of uh, collapsing dragons. The majority of them in terms of the screen this week is all red. There's pretty much uh, no uh, black space there for uh, uh, for uh, I mean, all of them were volatile, you know, so it was pretty uh, volatile week for there. Another thing that I also capture, in, in addition to the 27 currencies, is I do track gold and silver. And uh, uh, Wanda just added the, the Dow, the DAX, the S&P 500, uh, NASDAQ, and, and uh, uh, Russell 2000 to it's it's chart viewing so you can view on your wanda account what's actually happening there so if you have any stocks that are happening within there um or you have any kind of stocks that are you know that it'll track that that chart and that progress there the same way uh currency strengths i use this on a weekly basis to kind of get an operational view of which currencies are tracking um, one thing that I noticed there that uh, both Bitcoin and uh, gold uh, were kind of becoming safe havens, you know, as opposed to the Swiss franc, which usually became the safe haven for um, anybody that had, you know, inflation or any country that had inflation or inflationary pressures or economic bad news. Uh, that's not the case this this time around. Everything is going to uh, Bitcoin and everybody's trying to put all their money into Bitcoin or digital coins so that they can protect themselves. Um, but when gold was going down, I was going to say, wow, that's an inverse relationship. Now it's not the case anymore. Uh, gold is now going up with Bitcoin and Bitcoin dropped 10 grand just last night. Um, you know, for in response to, and gold stayed the same. So it, it's interesting to see how the precious metals and the digital coins and Swiss franc actually interact. But I use this to kind of see what could be potentially happening in terms of good trades that, that as a check to kind of see where the currency strengths are for the week. And then uh, I kind of, sum it all up with uh, what we're doing in terms of PineScript and Python. Um, I'm, I'm trained a little bit in Python, enough to be dangerous. Um, uh, Worth is a better programmer than me on, uh, on Python. And uh, he's incredible, actually incredible. So he, he programmed uh, the Riding the Dragon, Two Candle Rule, and the Sunday Night Special in Python. And I, I did the same on PineScript. All right, so we have two different versions of how we look through different problem sets. 
that are, are associated with like catastrophic success. Hey, uh, we found a Monday morning, uh, good morning wake up call after the Sunday night special, meaning I was up 5K or 3K. And do I close out? Yeah, yeah. I just went ahead and closed out all my trades, you know, at that point. And so even though it was only on the eight hour thing, I, I got to wake up at 6.30 and we found out pre-market that was a good time to take your profits at that point. So uh, there was also the catastrophic success. We found code to not only close out all our open profit trades, but any open loss trades to a specific amount. You can tailor it to three grand, five grand, 10 grand, however you want to set, set it at, but it, it helps you, it helps you maximize or protect you against yourself, right? And continuing to trade and trying to get back, you know, from the market when the market doesn't want to do that right now, you know? So um, there's uh, a lot of good, uh, good issues there. In terms of timeframes, um, we found the eight hour on a Wanda good uh, because at midnight, there's not too many people trading, right? So when the spreads, uh, the spreads and commissions are relatively low, but if you're trading at 5 p.m. in the afternoon when everybody else is trading on a swing trade, uh, you're going to be charged pretty heavily. So um, we found it that is kind of a sweet spot for, for trading. Um, uh, our next coding pra uh, practices are, or projects, uh, we're dealing with fractals. Uh, you know, we're also doing custom candles to see if we can uh, kind of mimic uh, the midnight candles um, on the daily. And, and then the other thing, too, is I'm starting to look at uh, not only what uh, Bill mentioned in terms of Monte, Monte Carlo, in terms of those cones of predictions, uh, but I've I've taken an AI master uh, artificial intelligence course in programming. So I'm looking at forecasting potential directions um, uh, and in, with indicators on, on PineScript. And so and right now, our version right now in PineScript is 5.0. It just recently upgraded. Um, and we're doing uh, rather well with that um, right there. So. Um, Having said all that, uh, Ken, um, I guess uh, you're, you're going to let me know when we move to uh, Rizuku. Um, but uh, right now, we're currently on Talent LMS, and uh, we're going to have to move all those videos and, and goodness over to Rizuku here pretty soon. That's all I have. OK, uh, let me turn it over to the team for questions. Uh, Eric, Jeff here, if I could, uh, if I could kick off if nobody else is. Um, uh, really interesting stuff. I've heard a lot about your, your Forex work. Uh, we, we used to do an awful lot of Forex work uh, ourselves and just haven't really focused on it that much recently. And sometimes I ask myself why. Um, when I see results like you guys are getting, that looks great. And it's over longer, longer time frames than we usually trade, which is even better because it's less management hassle. Uh, so that, that all looks, looks really interesting. Um, quick question for you on the, uh, the, the pine script through to the auto view. Um, I've looked at it before and I've, I've not focused too much on pine script and strategy work. Um, mainly because they don't have built in execution like automated execution through to a broker, right? So um, I think I may have come across AutoView before just in searching around. Um, and I think it, you know, it's sort of like it, it uses the PineScript alerts, doesn't it? To um, you, you basically set an alert in PineScript and then something picks it up and then sends an order out to a broker. So I guess my, my question is basically how how you found it. Um, my, my initial thought on that was like, eh, it sounds a little bit uh, like, like an extra step or an extra sort of level of things that could go wrong. Um, and so we just, I've basically avoided it in favor of other mechanisms that I'm familiar with. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm super, super interested in it, especially because there's so much crypto stuff available uh, as well, if that's, if that's available for it as well. Yeah, we've, uh, we've been using it uh 
pretty much, uh, what was it about uh, four months now, uh, maybe yeah. five, you know, four or five months now. Um, this, can you guys see my screen in terms of the auto view? Yeah. Okay. Um, basically this, these are the exchanges that auto view sets up. So any of one of these, like, uh, I think Bill mentioned Binance that he's working on right now, right? All of the crypto is on there. Coinbase pro my son's he's on that. Um, uh, Kraken, Wanda, and then of, of course, Trade Ovate. I think some of those, some folks were talking about ETFs and uh, some of the futures. Um, but uh, it, it really is kind of helpful. And these are, these are the messages within PineScript that go ahead and, and set forth those executions automatically. And then, um, and once you're signed into your account, and uh, let me see if I can go ahead there, but uh, you can, you can basically, you know, subscribe to um, subscribe to a particular platform or broker. And then once you log in, your account is automatically linked to trading. Let me see. Okay. Let me see if I can uh, get this up here for you. So my, my understanding is that it runs it through sort of like a Chrome extension. So does that mean that you have to have a browser open with whatever it is that you want to trade at all times? Or is it that, uh, yeah, do, do you have to keep something up? Is it, is it linked to your computer in some way, I guess is what I'm asking? Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, okay. You know, there's, there's a couple of steps in there um, that we have in our, our Forks 3.0. But you do have to set up, can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yeah. You do have to set up a Gmail account that is strictly for trading. All okay. right. And, uh, and then you'll have an auto view um, API that links directly to your account. All right. So you'll have the exchanges. <laughs> for me, I only have uh, Forex, um, uh, both the Yawanda and the Yawanda practice. And then, uh, of course, trading view. Uh, when you want to sign into your particular account, you go to trading panel and it has, I think it even has trade station on here too. Uh, but uh, you won't be able to auto view that yet. Um, right. It has a specific other kind of thing, but uh, uh, for me, Forex is Awanda or Forex.com. It's plenty, plenty goodness for me. So <laughs> um, here's, here's what I mentioned here too, also, as far as, tracking with the Dow, the S&P 500, NASDAQ 500 and all that. But uh, I went ahead and set up these scripts on here for um, there. I, I only put the Z3 on there. Uh, this highlights the Sunday night candle <clears throat> so on the eight hour. So that gets me started for the rest of the week because on this week I close out everything. On Friday, you know, at, at 1600 central time, I close out everything and then by the time I get to um, uh, to trade there, I've got all of these these indicators: the the Bollinger Band Z3. I got the 200, the RL270, the RL90, which is lime green. I got the the Dragon, and then of course I've got programmed in there uh, the color um, RL10 which uh, like in this case depicts a uh, collapsing dragon, right? So we went from red to yellow, back to red. And so this, this is Heiken Ashi and this is regular price action here. So when I set up for a trade, right? And I wanna not have to look at all of these numbers that are up here. I have a label on here that depicts my targets and my stops, you know, that I wanna go ahead and put on there for a particular, uh, particular trade. So this is already programmed into the script and, uh, and uh, we've, uh, we've been working on this weekly, uh, Worth and I and the, the whole crew, you know, and, and making sure this, uh, uh, Frank added the PSAR here to there. So if you want to use the PSAR in there and add that to the script too, as you can, all of these scripts are, are modified and you can go ahead and modify them to your risk tolerance too, as well. Amount of lots you want to trade, 
you may want to trade instead of standard lots, you may want to trade a micro and mini lot. You know, it's a, it's totally up to you. Great, that looks fantastic. I'll have to I'll have to look into that further. Yeah, and if you want the script, we can send it to you. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, all part of the um, talent LMS there. So if you're a part of that that uh, crew there, cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. We share we share everything, right? Worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, that's uh, that's uh, basically the the scripts on there. The one that I'm actually working on too was the. I don't know if you can see this or not. Can you see that or no? It, you got the same screen. Uh, no, we can see that. Yeah, it's got the the fractals, and you see the lines here, the lower highs and lower lows. Right. Right, and so these. This is a fractal system that Frank wanted me to look at in terms of auto programming into there. So if you got it, like Bill mentioned, you got it the 200 EMA and you want the you know PSR to flip. The, this Pine script is relatively easy to learn um, if you have any kind of programming background or experience, and this this can be really set up pretty quickly too for you. Yeah, it's so, great. Pine, Pine scripts, uh, you know, I, I find it, you know, it's pretty pretty easy to use. You can do an awful lot with not a lot of code. Um, right. So yeah, no, it's yeah, it, it's it's a nice system. I, I love TradingView actually. I think it's a great uh, great system overall. Yeah, I uh, I'm on a I think 56 version right now. So I've been doing all kinds of, of testing on that stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I try to get to my safe place there, like Ken Manches and all that kind of stuff. It, my happy place is programming, just kind of getting through different problems and all that. And then afterwards, I go swim, you know, <laughs> that's a that's the kind of thing. I have to go swim some laps, you know, to you know get rid of all the, the tension and stress and stuff. But uh, <laughs> this is uh, um, this is what we we are working on. And uh, and uh, we're 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 working pretty hard on trying to continue to make sure that we have uh, continued metrics and and uh, math behind it. Uh, I think Ben mentioned one point, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Worth it. What, what was that Z score kind of oscillator that he had? Um, oh, I, I forgot what it, what he what he called it or whatever. But a uh, uh, risk Z. Yeah, the risk Z. Uh, that was phenomenal. And if we could, if we can incorporate that, you know, the math into that in terms of potential script, I mean, I think that's, that's gold and all that. So we're, we're trying to do that for Forex and uh, um, we're got it already programmed in Python. So. I sent you a Pine script version. Did you get a chance to try it or it didn't work for you? No, I haven't. I haven't looked at it. I'm sorry, Worth. I'm uh, I'm slow. Busy. I understand. <laughs> and we kind of make fun of each other a lot. So, uh, you know, hopefully you come there with the thick skin and all that kind of stuff. Because uh, John, he uh, he he goes there. Holzheimer, he comes and he shows us pictures of his RV and he's in Mexico and he's doing the scans and all that kind of stuff while we're you know slaving away programming and all that. So. But it's a good crew. If you guys are, um, if you guys got any free time on Wednesday evenings at uh, seventeen thirty or five thirty p.m. Central uh, Eastern time, we'd we'd love to have you. Great. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't mind joining, but that's kind of the middle of the night for me, so that would be a little tricky. Yeah, you're in London, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions there? That's all I got, guys. Yeah, Eric, if you don't mind, if I can follow up with a question. Yeah, yeah, uh, shoot, Zorn. So you said, I, I, I'm understanding <clears throat> this. You got the indicators in, in Pine Script, and they're automatically populating the box up there. So how's the, and, but the connection to actually issue the order, that's what you use. Is that what you use AutoView for? Yeah, the, uh, the, I use Pine Script, and what you'll see is these strategies thing. Sure. Here. It's a short one lot. And what that does is that PineScript will communicate that in an alert 
to auto view saying, okay. okay, now you will trade it at this time for a short. And what we did was we got a, a short here just below the RL10. It was on a spring, looked like it was a collapsing dragon, right? So we had the winner, the spring, and it collapsed all the way down to the Bollinger Band, which is my out, right? That's my target, okay. right? So, and it, I got all that goodness out of one trade. <clears throat> got you. I get it. Thanks. And, and this not only is for the, um, the stat, static candles here, when this is going in real time, this will adjust. This will give you a label in real time of where it's at. So this, uh, is a, there's a lot of goodness in this label in terms of saying, okay, this is where I'm going to have to place it. So if you're still doing manual trading, um, uh, yeah, this, uh, this will help you um, increase that. Uh, one of the problems that I, um, that I had was, is that, Hey, I got to leave my computer on 24 seven because, um, you cannot turn off your computer. It's gotta be in the background and that kind of thing. So, um, you can get a virtual server and to where this trades 24 seven, no problems, no issues. Even if the power goes out or anything like that, on the server stack or whatever, we're at eight hour candles. So it'll reboot, reset. There's programs and scripts in there to make sure that it's connected. And then it'll email, or I, I guess, email me the, you know, hey, the, hey, your, your server's down, that kind of thing. That's a free server on Amazon that we used and all that. I don't know where to, have you been using it yet at all for Python or no? <clears throat> Not yet. I've been using a Linux server um, through Linode. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I want Amazon knowing my trades. Somehow I think they have better ways of making money. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, it's good to see everybody too. Again, I haven't seen uh, 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 Chi Wang over there. I haven't seen him in a while. How are you doing there, sir? And a lot of other yeah, folks that I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Thanks. Are you, uh, uh, where are you at on there? I still see daylight. We're, we're dark over here. I'm in Singapore. Oh, so for me, it's just, oh. yeah, just, now it's just morning time. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right, let me jump in. Hey, right. so here's what I need. Uh, I need those three systems described with pseudocode that says, hey, I got three systems. They're least correlated, we heard from Worth. But this is essentially what they're trying. One is a mean reversion. One is a breakout system. One is a band trip or whatever it is. We got to get that written in English in one sentence so that we can say exactly what it is. Uh, need more histograms. Uh, histograms speak volumes uh, about what the end results are, which is what matters. So the essential slide on this one was that for the month of November, there were 279 trades. It was a 52 win, 48 loss. So it's a uh, coin flip in our favor that pays two and a half to one with auto trading on eight hour bars with minimal time investment across multiple currencies. Done in one. See what I mean? So <clears throat> there are obvious advantages to trading Forex. We all, everybody in this room knows that there's volume, liquidity, leverage, continuity. There's no gaps. Simplicity, because there's fewer choices. There's not 10,000, so there's tens and dozens. And there's a certain regularity because of the size of the market that uh, less prone to manipulation. So all those reasons are there included in Forex uh, version 1.0 anyway. What, what I need to see the uh, Forex group doing is exploring the SSC, the supported spring crossing, the Z3 pinch. Uh, I should have put collapsing dragon in there for direct application. Uh, and here's why. I need you to unshare that screen for a moment. My friend. Right. 
Right. So, uh, so the reason we need to explore these other patterns. That, let me know when you can see my screen. I got to get rid of that big blob in the middle. I right. can you guys see my screen? Shoot. Wait, Are we back yet? Can you see my screen? Sorry about that. Am I back yet? Uh, yeah, you're back. Okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, let me make sure this thing was uh, recording. This idea was so big that it melted the internet. So, you know, that's how good this is going to be. Uh, okay, and recording is still going. So <clears throat> the last thing I was saying was uh, we need to um, check some of these other patterns that are working in uh, uh, the equities. Uh, and my favorite time on the uh, Forex pairs is 15 minutes, and here's why. So this is that chart you showed with the auto trading on the Aussie dollar. This is the Aussie dollar on 15 minutes. I like one minute on equities. I like 15 minutes on currencies just because. And uh, each of those big orange dots is a big time collapsing dragon. And, uh, and so uh, like that one in the middle uh, and oh, all of these occur out of a Z3 pinch. So a 15 minute breakout in a market that's open for 23 hours gives you plenty of time to enjoy the move and yet still be responsive to the three eight-hour sessions that, are, that occur inside the uh, currencies. And I thought, the, um, I thought John Bollinger's discussion of how to handle those three eight-hour sessions in the day was very instructive. Jeff, you and I will, you will recall, you and I having exactly that conversation 10 years ago and the things that we talked about, he sort of just confirmed. And it's a, a humbling moment to hear one of your heroes say that you're not completely screwed up, <laughs> that he's heard yeah. worse, right? Because we talked about, well, you could take an aggregate day and just accept it, or you could break it into eight hour sessions in linear sequence and work them, or you could go even further and, and just check the eight hour chunks against their previous eight hour chunk so that you're getting just that session for that eight hours and then doing it discontent i just i prefer the eight hour continuity myself because i think most other people are looking at the continuous signal rather than slicing it into different components but my point is that what we want is to be able to mine every opportunity in forex that we can see and uh the hardest thing in the world to do is to have a positive expectancy system like you have, and then look to push its boundaries and to keep looking. The tendency is to just keep mining that mine until it's out of gold and then start looking elsewhere. My spider sense is that the supported spring crossing and the Z3 pinch uh, breakout in either direction, there's a lot of gold in that mine. A lot of gold, especially if you see the like the SSC beginning on a 15 minute that you can dial down like Ken H does with the, the daily and the 30 minutes. My argument is you can use the 15 minute as the baseline uh, and then work it uh, from there. You could even, I think, uh, take a look at the hourly breakdowns. Like if you look on this one, this collapse here in the middle below that previous VWAP was massively good. So to me, somewhere between in the way that we use the hour or we use the daily and 30 minute for equities, I'm thinking that the hourly 15 minute for currencies has some 
uh, has some real advantages for finding um, critical moments. Hey, Ken, so, can I chime in here? A little bit? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, just just one careful here. This is this is considered a major currency, right? So Aussie dollar, U.S. dollars are major currency. So yep. those spreads are not going to be so long. But if you do Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar on a 15 minute, you, your your triggers may hit that spread. So just be careful when you're yep. going to the miners on a, yep. on a 15 minute. So I don't mess with the miners anyway. I do everything in relation to the USD because I want the biggest, fattest market ever because I'm a primitive caveman. So my point is that uh, I want to explore some of these other reliable patterns that are coming out of the equities and, uh, and map them to the Forex to see what it is we can see. And now that you guys are uh, standardizing these rule sets, I want to be able to robo trade these with uh, um, the uh, supported spring crossing, the collapsing dragon and Z3P. Cause I think, I think those are the only things you need. I'm now of the opinion that what you need is abnormal behavior. And there's two places you get abnormal behavior. One, it's abnormally sideways quiet channel, which is a Z3P. Then the breakout from that is always surprising to people. Or you wait for the abnormal move to have occurred. And then you're either going to get one more of those continuation, or you're going to get a reversion to the mean. And that's a, re a trend reversal, which is the SSC. So to me, those three central patterns um, uh, should transcend uh, equities and go to currencies uh, and the cryptos because it reflects the underlying psychology of the market. So that's some areas that I'd like to see us uh, uh, get after. Um, let's see the other things. I see if it, if that survived the uh, the, uh, the the meltdown here. Um, yeah, number six, need to see blocks for the day, week, and monthly standard performance. And I mentioned this to Worth this morning. Uh, you weren't in a room at the time, oh, screwing off somewhere. I don't blame you. You can't help it. Um, but if the, if the standard week is the pulse, then we need to see not only kind of the individual trades, which brief out well, but we need to get some sense of what is the normal day or the normal week plus or minus the standard deviation so that as you start looking at daily weekly and monthly performance this thing now looks like the engine that it is and that it has performance characteristics a power characteristic and worth knows what i'm talking about is the the efficiency of that engine over that range and so we need to see that normalized for day week and month uh, because if you want to hook up your retirement to this, you're really thinking about what's the monthly return on the, it cost me gasoline to put, or money to put gasoline into that engine. And then it produces some kind of output over the course of a typical month. So we need to kind of hook it up to the dyno and see what that does. All right. So I'll, I'll follow up with you on that if you need more guidance. Um, and then the one page process logic uh, will help guys that are looking to adopt your best practices for uh for process automation and that is where where does the order start what happens next how does it hand off to the different software packages what are the interfaces and and the system logic that will help with the uh um the uh the the discussion and description of the system but we're really proud of the work you guys are doing i'm, I'm in awe of your ability to automate and, uh, and to keep going. So what we will do is, uh, yeah, w uh, between now and the end of March, uh, at the end of March, the talent LMS system uh, will go offline and everything will be migrated to Rizuku courseware by, by that time. So it's a simple matter of moving videos and lessons over. So we'll, we'll handle that administratively. Uh, so keep, just keep driving on, discovering what you're doing and we'll be fine. Okay, uh, last chance uh, around the horn for guys. Um, got uh, we're stuck it out a little longer than normal. Here's what I would like you to do. Um, I, I want to set us up for tomorrow. Um, let me see here. Gonna... Let's see, view course. All right, let me know when you can see that screen. Uh, 
right. should be seeing the um, the research weekend course on the screen. I see it. Okay, so um, we've uh, worked our way down through Eric's. So tomorrow, uh, Griff, Tom Hardison, and Phil Wu in the morning. Jeff is going to surprise us with something good. Um, I'm, I don't know if Lisa is going to be able to be here to brief us on her sideways uh, volatile system. That was a system that she built in the Super Trader Systems program and briefed out. And then um, I, I gave extensive feedback to her on that. It looks a lot like what we trained on for the bar by bar effort uh, last year. She was... Uh, she was one of the partners in crime with Ken H on that. So she, so I'm not surprised she was doing so well on that, that I'm not surprised that a bunch of that got into her system. Uh, what we have in that folder, if you click on that lesson, uh, we have her briefing from that systems development. So what I'd like you to do uh, is, um, I, I don't think it works really well to play these videos and listen to the videos together online. What I'd like, what I would propose to do is, um, uh, if you guys watch that video and then have questions, uh, I'm competent in answering questions about her system and that general approach. And so I'd like to just kind of cut right to the chase and talk about that. Um, or, if not a lot of us have done that, what I'll do is I, I have plenty of material to fill in that gap uh, for, that, for that lesson. So that's what I'd like to do with. Now, if Lisa's here and she's able to do it, then Lisa will go at that regular time. And we'll just get the presentation and ask questions. Otherwise, and it won't do you any harm to watch that video, which I thought she did a great job on. Um, Luke has an amazing presentation um on the on par with uh, ken h's it's interesting to see how these two craftsmen uh, have worked simultaneously uh together matt richardson is a longtime veteran of our research weekends and live tradings he, he he is amazing his presentation slide deck is already uh already in there for review um he's a he's a lawyer and a PhD, and now a pro money manager uh, who got started in that business by working with uh, Jim Carroll, who was in here earlier. And then he came to a couple of the research weekends and live tradings and started refining his systems, added, um, added discipline and rigor to them, and is now full-time pro money manager. Uh, and just so proud of his work. He's just, a, he's an amazing guy to me. Um, and then, uh, uh, I also have in this, the last lesson on there, the, uh, you see my Ken's update on the Protreptic 101 course. I hinted at that in my debrief on, on Sonal's uh, presentation. That's about a 40 minute discussion of what Protreptic is, what it is concerned with about exploration of values without judgment, but it is the, your coach actually helps you discover what you mean about the values you profess. Uh, and it's a, it's a style of coaching that's not common in the world. Much of the coaching that we get in the world is in the form of, here, you should do this better. And it gets very directive. Protreptic is the opposite of that. Protreptic is the Greek term for the style of teaching and coaching that Socrates and Aristotle and Plato did back in the day when they were trying to help develop the self-sufficiency and inner reflection of uh, the political leaders. Those guys had nobody that could hold them accountable because everybody was afraid to tell them the truth. So the protreptic coaching was a method that Socrates and Plato and Aristotle developed to help these guys become genuinely reflective thinkers about their own life and their own experience. That is a habit of mind that I think is essential to help prepare us for all the external distractions that are out there. It causes you to get strongly connected to your inner values and to explore them in a meaningful, accountable way in public. So uh, I'm helping Jens 
uh, develop a home study course to do that. Uh, he and his senior writing partner, Ole Fo Kierkeby, a Danish philosopher, uh, updated that method and wrote their philosophy book in Danish and then Jens translated to English. And it's a philosophy manual. And I want, I'm trying to help them turn that into something that a monkey like me can use. And the best way I know how to do that is to expose my thinking to their coaching. And so that protreptic course is me being protreptically coached about what we do in such a way that uh, you guys might profit from me suffering in public um, in a transparent way. And four or five folks are uh, my explicit accountability partners, like Ken Hums in, in this room is helping me do that um, by giving me feedback about what he sees me doing and saying in those sessions. So I just invite you to take a look at that because there's a strong connection to the true storytelling piece that I spoke to Sonal and us about. Uh, Jens Larson was one of the co-authors of the true storytelling book that I have been uh, studying and working on every day for the last two years. And I'm getting it installed into the curriculum at, uh, for the army at our college. And I'm um, profoundly uh, moved by what it can do for us. And it was uh, really important for me to learn that stuff during the COVID. And it's what prompted me actually to do the nightly strategy podcasts to quit just thinking about it and then just start living it forward out loud in public. And that has sort of led to the current ecosystem we have, which is the nightly, the nightly podcasts. And then that led to the bar by bar training. And that I think is a major contributor to the collective learning we've done with uh, Luke and, um, and Ken and Lisa in public. And I'm convinced that that's the only way to do it that I know of. And uh, so I'm grateful to those folks for trusting me enough to, to give it a try in public. So well, what I'd like to do is uh, offer that lesson to you. And if you viewed it and we want to talk about it, since that's the last thing on the schedule after Matt, I'm happy to answer questions about it or uh, I'm ready to defer those questions until future Saturday evenings. So as a reminder, uh, in the future, the Saturday evening podcast is going to be restricted to those of us that suffered through, you know, this research weekend and are part of that team that has paid the paid their dues by being, um, you know, good contributors to the team and the community practice. And then we'll use that as a work in progress um, clearing house or a watering hole or coffee talk, or whatever it may be. Uh, and that way we don't have to wait every six months for the updates. Uh, so what I would say then is um, for Lisa's presentation and for the protreptic course presentation, those are all things that I'm prepared to talk about tomorrow if you want to. And then finally, what I, I wanna show you this one, my offering to this, the slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That was a, uh, a narrative that I did uh, because I asked all my soccer players to tell me what they learned about life by going through the way we learn to play soccer together in the club. And uh, one of my college graduates, uh, she got her master's in international relations and she was a player of mine 12 years ago and we've stayed in touch. And she's working now <clears throat> Uh, in a uh, non-governmental organization to help combat human trafficking in the world. And she wrote a beautiful essay called Slow is Smooth, Smooth is Fast, and what she learned about that. That's our, that's our principle in the club. Um, go deliberately slow in order to be deliberately smooth and build the muscle memory that you can then scale to regular speed and then you learn perfectly from the beginning that if you can go slow to be smooth, then that smoothness will lead to fastness. Uh, so this is my take on her essay. Um, then what I've done in the downloadable resources, I've put together a 
curated list of what I thought were the most obviously useful goodies from the last 18 months, things that we've learned through doing the, you know, the nightly podcasts and, and whatnot. And um, it features uh, Fletcher, Angus Fletcher's Guide to Creativity for the Army. Uh, some flashcards that we've been that we used along the way in the hybrid trading course and in the nightly podcasts. Um, the, uh, a, a couple one pagers like the build a frog exercise for those that are interested in frog trading intraday. Design thinking visualization is a way to think about complexity in the world and how to manage it. Um, so those are all resources that will remain in that course. And we don't have to talk about them tomorrow and we won't. But those things are part of the ongoing uh, body of knowledge that I intend to keep building out in this course. And then those would be the subjects for things like if you see them and you want to talk about them on some Saturday night, then that becomes the mechanism for us to do that. Think of it as the, the foundations course is how people get read on to what we do. And then I do a uh, another Saturday podcast where I answer their specific questions. But for folks that are, you know, farther down the pathway and have things they want to talk about, then that's what I intend the the second Saturday podcasts to be for us is that ongoing community of practice. So that's my first contribution there. Or that's my first offering to, um, uh, to that effort. Um, so. Uh, that's what I want to say about that. So those are fair game for tomorrow after the session is over, uh, after Matt does his presentation. If you want to stick around and kick that off, then that might end up being the, uh, that'll roll into the Sunday night podcast anyway. So uh, those are the ones I wanted you to see before we, uh, before we close up shop, because some of you may not, man, I just can't get enough of this stuff. Uh, you're not so if that's the case, but I, I want you to know that those resources are there. And then otherwise, uh, the intention is we shall see you uh, at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Griff will be ready to rock and roll. Uh, he and Tom and Phil have put together some just beautiful work on uh, uh, thorough learning. Uh, and we'll see what, what uh, expedited learning looks like. And they've done a great service to us with the note sheets that they put together. So I'm, I'm excited to see the uh, their work. All right, that's everything I got. Um, uh, this is where we're going to check out now. And when I say check out, what I mean is um, uh, just how you doing, where are you at, how's it feel, uh, you know, a 10 second uh, chit chat, if you will. Um, I'm feeling good in Kansas. I got a, uh, I can smell dinner being cooked upstairs. And since I'm on a one meal a day fasting regime, this is like Pavlov's dog. My mouth is watering because uh, she's making egg rolls and I'm a sucker for egg rolls. So good to see you. Thanks so much for the work you guys done. Amazing day at work. Just so uh, uh, impressed by all your efforts and your willingness to share. So that's me. Anybody now, when I hold up the talking stair, I say, aho, that means as it should be. And then whoever grabs the stick, you got it. Okay, it looks Van. like I'll go since everybody should. <laughs> okay. Good. Van then Zoran. Well, um, it's been a great day, everybody. Thank you for sharing everything and everything I've listened to you talking about since I'm a relative newbie. And uh, it just makes me feel like I'm on a I'm on a good path and and I appreciate all the sharing that everybody's done. And mostly I appreciate that you're going to end this just in time for Michigan to play Iowa tonight for the Big Ten Championship. So I've been waiting all day, very patiently, <clears throat> hoping that would end timely, and it did. So yeah. thank, thanks, everybody. I hope. Go Blue. Zoran. Well, my wife's an Iowa grad, so I'm, I'm uh, obligated to root for Iowa. <laughs> well, I, you can't help that. <laughs> nope. But Bad choice will say, stay with you forever. <laughs> I I've actually feel like I went to a college set, like I was in college for, for 10 hours today. My mind is my mind is fried, but in a good way. It was just it was just a fire hose of information, a lot of interesting things. Uh, just gave me more ideas and, and questions to ask and, and things to explore. So I appreciate everybody 
uh, sharing all their knowledge. It's really encouraging. You're on a good team. Aho. When you're done, say aho, and then the next person is going to grab the stick. Aho. Yeah, you're right. Look at us learning. Oh, I had a good day. It was uh, most amazing. Uh, as you all said, drinking from a fire hose uh, and some really good feedback. I hope. Yeah, I'd just like to dovetail on what Worth said. It just was great not only seeing you guys again, but uh, going through your stories and your learning. I, I learned a lot. And uh, it was an incredible sharing experience. And I appreciate all of you, you know, coming here and, and uh, sharing your stuff. Thanks. Aho. Aho. Come on, Army Strong. Try to keep up, Eric. <laughs> You're a transporter, so I don't hold it against you. Martin. Thank you. I just, you know, I want to thank everybody as well uh, for sharing uh, all these great, uh, great learnings and insights. And, um, and thanks again for, uh, for your graphing and contributing uh, and his knowledge to that as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing opportunity to be part of this. And really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Always Aho. good to see you. Aho. <clears throat> oh, I go ahead. And, I'll go ahead and grab this first. JB, um, yeah. great to uh, great to see a bunch of familiar faces that we've not seen in in some time, and uh, and yeah, just just glad to glad to be involved and uh, learned a lot. Uh, it's late over here, so I'm tired and uh, going to go to bed. <laughs> it's, it's about uh, twelve forty or so in the evening, so yeah, we'll wake up early and, and carry on tomorrow. So look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Oh, look at you learning. Go give her a hug too. <laughs> well, Gene Wang. Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks everybody for this amazing uh, sharing. So I learned a lot. So I'm uh, quite new to this uh, community. So I think um, for sure we won't be ending today. Uh, we'll be continuing. Actually, today actually is the starting of our journey. So I look forward to, to learn and to contribute to the community. Yeah. Thanks. Aho. Mark. Mute. Unmute. Sorry about that. Very insightful. Enjoyed the uh, knowledge and uh, the, uh, the, the sharing of the information. It is drinking from the fire hose, but uh, I will try to catch up and learn over time. I hope. The main thing is it's what sticks and not what's sent so much. It's getting the pieces that stick and assembling them and building out from that. That's the, that's the thing that, that we're learning, a brick at a time. So I hope, yeah. I'll claim the stick. Ernie. Go ahead, Ernie, un unmute. Yep, still muted. We almost had you. I'm sensing I'm sensing a uh, a contentment in the force with an aho and an open hand, an open glad hand. And if I've got that right, then we are a thumbs up at this time. Glad. Thank you for the challenge of organizing a presentation and the joy of watching all of these other presentations. Um, I'm feeling inspired, uh, challenged. 
uh, delighted at the idea of Saturday night uh, further studies. Uh, and also, I, I'd like to plant the seed for a, a, a an in-person event again in the future because as fruitful as it is to see everyone's presentation, I remember all of the times that I've had talking with many of these people here today yeah. informally. That was just absolutely fabulous. So it's been great to reconnect with people here today, and I hope to, we can continue to do that. Yeah, and I mean, I have a basement full of drums that are just begging to be played, and you know, they're they're hungry for attention. Ken Hum, bring us home. All right, thank you, everyone. It was, uh, it was great to meet some new friends today. It was it was a great learning, a nice mixture of psychology, self, market systems, journeys. It's been great. Uh, it was my first time presenting, and thank you for making it easy for me. Really appreciate it. I learned so much. Uh, just letting it soak in. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I think uh, Bob was, uh, his face is still on there, but I think he had already departed. So uh, I'll wrap up and say a uh, great, great day of work. Uh, tomorrow's another day. That's the next trade. So get, uh, get some good rest and uh, we're, we will crush it tomorrow as much as we can stand. And the beauty of that, um, uh, I think that the Saturday night jamboree and whatever uh, allows us that there is a mechanism to learn. There's not, this is not a scarcity environment. Uh, this is a continuous learning environment. So, um, uh, so relax and learn fast. So uh, I declared a session closed and I'll see how fast this thing will process eight hours of monkey chat. And I'll uh, get that posted as soon as I can. So I'll uh, take good care. See you tomorrow. Thanks so much for your your kindness and your trust and your uh, your curiosity cooperation. Take good care. Yes, bye. See you. Bye.